Hi, today we've got one of these open frame laser engraver units and uh, this one was supplied by Comgrow and this is the Z1 desktop diode laser cutter and engraving machine. This one has been fitted with the 10 watt blue laser but there is also a slightly cheaper 5 watt laser version as well. With the 10 watt laser we can supposedly burn through about 8 millimeters of wood. Uh, however, in an electronics environment, that's not particularly uh, useful for me. What I actually wanted to try and use this machine for is for engraving stuff into a PCB. Now, this is a PCB that we had made at PCB Way, which is the sponsor for this video. And often, uh, especially when we're developing PCBs, we'll be building up boards with various different configurations, or it might have some calibration data, that kind of thing and it's very easy to lose track of what's going on. So I thought it might be quite neat to see if we can just engrave some data into the silk screen on here, not cutting through any of the copper, uh, but just calibration data, or it might be something like the MAC address or that kind of thing, uh, just on each PCB rather than having to faff around with stickers. So that's what we're primarily going to be testing today. Uh, but obviously, with one of these engraving machines, you can engrave into acrylic and that kind of thing. So if we are making a front panel for a unit, uh, then we might be able to engrave some parts into there. So here is the unit on the Comgrow website where you can buy this item from. The version that I've got is the 10 watt dual diode version. So it has a visible and a blue laser. And this one is about $349. It's slightly cheaper if you get the 5 watt version, about $90 cheaper. And having had a quick play with some of the software that you can use with one of these laser engravers, I have come to the conclusion that probably Lightburn is one of the better ones. And it works out slightly cheaper to buy the license with the laser engraver. So I'd probably recommend that you go with that. For now, I'm gonna be using the demo, but I have a feeling I'm gonna end up buying that license key at the end of the demo period. So on the website, they've got some other accessories that you might wanna buy. Uh, I do recommend some form of ventilation or purifier or filter or something like that, because this can generate quite a lot of smoke, particulates, and other kinds of nasties when you're burning through certain materials. The unit has quite a large work area of 400 by 400 millimeters and the machine itself is almost 600 by 600 millimeters so it's quite a large machine you need a reasonably large desk to sit this thing on the laser has a spot size of about 0.08 millimeters that's for the 5 watt and also the 10 watt laser and the pdbm value for that laser you can adjust from 0 to 1000 so it allows you to do some reasonable grayscale printing should you wish to in your material so when it arrives, you do have to do a little bit of assembly yourself. This part is pre-assembled. You then do have to attach your laser, but everything else you have to assemble. So you've got to put the frame together. The instructions don't quite give clear instructions on the frame. So the limit switch needs to be at the bottom right here. And then you just need to attach the belts for the two motors here. And we've got two motors so that this stage here moves forward and backwards without twisting or anything like that. And that gives much more repeatable results uh, when you're actually doing your engraving. Then inside the box, there's a couple of tools, a few hex keys, um, comes with all the bolts and everything. You get a few bits of wood here for you to practice on. You get an AC adapter, which I incidentally am not gonna use. Uh, I've got a 24 volt adapter already plugged in in my lab, but also it kind of said 24 volt, four amps. But then if you look a bit closer here, it says 48 volts, three amps. So a bit of confusion on the same label which is enough for me to doubt that um, this is a trustworthy AC adapter. Having said that, it is pretty heavyweight. However, we might see if we can crack this open at the end of the video and see what the power supply that comes with it is like. And then we come on to the slightly more um, safety side of this thing. Now, this is an open frame laser engraver. They give you these goggles, but that's quite sketchy, really. I mean, it probably protects your eyes. I don't know how uh, good these are going to be at attenuating the light, but there's nothing to stop you getting skin burns or anything like that. So uh, if you do intend to use this, especially in any kind of work environment, I would suggest you get some other box that goes around it to protect you from burns because these units are all slightly sketchy. I think you can get uh, from Comgrow a sort of um, foil lined uh, zipper thing that you can put over it while it's engraving. Uh, I probably would recommend it, uh, especially if you're using a sort of um, eye height or something like that on a desk. On the floor, you're probably going to be okay. But if you do engrave into shiny materials, just so you can engrave into stainless steel and that kind of thing, you're risking reflections 
uh, and by damage and burns and that kind of thing. So be careful when you use one of these items. Right, so in Light Burn, I've just created this very simple label here. It's about 40 millimeters wide and 13 high. So the text here is getting quite small. It says a height of one millimeter for the oscillator frequency. So let's see if we can try and engrave on this PCB. Now, I don't know how powerful we should set the laser. At the moment, it's set to 20%. So we'll see how that behaves. And a quick word from our sponsor for today's video, PCBWay, who have currently got 10% off 3D printing. And it's extremely easy to get your parts ordered on here. Just click on 3D printing and get started. And then you upload your CAD file, STL, OBJ, STEP, or STP file. And then you can pick from a whole range of different options. So we've got resin, nylon, as well as some of your other uh, standard 3D printing materials like PLA and PETG. They do give some guidance on to how to prevent warpage and that kind of thing of your 3D printed part. And really interestingly is you can actually get your 3D printed item finished in various surface finishes. So you can get it spray painted, electro plated, and you can also get the exterior sanded with 1000 grit sand paper. So you can get a really flawless finish. So don't forget to visit PCB Way if you want to get some items 3D printed. So we turn on the machine and there is a fan on the laser so it is a little bit noisy now but we click home and that finds the limit positions first of all and then we need to work out where it's actually going to engrave on the workpiece because you don't want it burning through uh, your desk or anything like that. Ideally you'd place something like a piece of wood there so that it doesn't just burn straight through um, your desk but there's a button that says frame and this shows you where it's going to be without actually turning on the laser. So you can see it's framing the area to be cut and therefore we can place our PCB in that area. We can once again just double check that we're not going to burn into the desk here and no, that stays within the PCB area. The final thing before we try and do any cuts is we've got to actually focus the laser so that we actually focus the beam in the right place. Now they give you this 7mm piece of acrylic and you place that between your workpiece and the laser and then you just literally drop the laser right down onto that piece of acrylic and that is the correct focus distance and that will make sure that you actually get the correct size cut. So that's in place I'm now going to just turn on the fume extractor so it's going to get a bit noisy uh, and then we'll start it actually engraving and see what it does with those cutter settings. Now the laser engraving wasn't entirely without incident, so let's take a closer look at what the problems that I had were. Now I wanted to engrave some text onto my PCB. I wanted it to be solid fill rather than just an outline. So I went to the option on Lightburn and selected fill so that it would fill in the text. And when you actually go to the options for fill, 
it gives you some indication like speed, the maximum power of the laser, and it also allows you to change the line interval. So that's basically the spacing between each horizontal line when it's printing. And you can also choose how much overscanning and that kind of thing. Now, if you take a look at the first print that I did, I ended up with this really strange result where the S here printed fine and the S here printed fine, but all of these other letters were kind of squished upwards. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense. You can even see the outline box is quite wobbly. And I was starting to think that was down to possibly uh, some slop in the overall mechanism. However, what doesn't make a great deal of sense about this is if we go back to the software, uh, we've got various options for how you print. You can do all, fill all shapes at once or you can fill them individually. I had fill all shapes at once and if we have a look at the preview for how it's going to print this, basically it goes through line by line here. So it doesn't make sense for the mechanism to have shifted uh, because it was doing it an entire line at a time, a bit like a dot matrix printer. Now had I have had the um, individual option here selected and then we preview this, you can see it kind of does one letter at a time but even that wouldn't make a great deal of sense because somehow it got the overall height of the print the same it's just that bottom part was compressed so I really don't know what was going on with that printing issue. I never managed to resolve it directly uh, using this setting. The only thing that I did on the next print was to try and change the speed because that was at maximum speed. I think it's 6,000 millimeters per minute. Then I started changing some of the settings, slowed it right down and that did improve things uh, but then I started getting some of these really strange results where um, some of the letters, some of the numbers were consistently not printing as heavily as some of the others. So you can see the 8 here doesn't look anything like the 4 that's next to it and the 8 here did exactly the same thing. The bottom half of the 6 all the same here and we're seeing a similar issue over here when I changed some of the other settings as well. Um, you can see here the bottom print didn't really work very well either. So I experimented with pretty much every option to do with how it fills the text, including some of the cross-hatching methods where it goes horizontally and then vertically. And also I tried um, printing it um, where it fills it at 45 degree angles. So it goes along at an upwards 45 degrees and then 45 degrees in the opposite direction this way. And that gave even worse results. In fact, it wasn't very repeatable at all. So you can see in one direction, it printed um, the STG electronics down here and then when it came back to do it in the other direction it had shifted it slightly and I think what that's down to is some of the belts that are on this laser engraver. So what we've got is really quite a heavy gantry here although it's driven by two stepper motors the only thing that stops this having any slop is these belts here which I think end up being quite elastic because when we're trying to cross hatch at 45 degrees this gantry is moving forward and backwards quite rapidly and that seems to really stretch these belts and that's why we don't get repeatable results. It doesn't seem to skip any steps and if you do the same print over the one that you've already done it comes out in exactly the same place. So I think it's literally down to just this gantry being too heavy for these belts. So I think one improvement here would either be to change the belt material, to thicken the belt or even have some kind of toothed gear that runs along here that the motors directly engage into. Now the way that I actually ended up resolving the print is prior to printing is to convert it to bitmap. So there's an option up here to convert the image to bitmap and then printing in grayscale and then all of a sudden all of the problems went away. So that highlights that some of the issues that we're seeing with those odd individual numbers not printing properly doesn't appear to be down to the printer. That seems to be the way that this Lightburn software sends the data to the printer because once we print in grayscale I got some really nice results. So this is the kind of effect that I was hoping for in the first place. So if you can imagine maybe the QR code has the ability to allow you to connect to the Wi-Fi that's on the board. You've got some calibration data and maybe the serial number and that kind of thing. Something that's unique per PCB that doesn't need you to stick a label to the board. And I think this looks really nice. I then decreased the line distance on this print next to it and then we get very, very clear result. And I think this is pretty much perfect. Uh, and I think I'll end up using this, using these settings 
quite a lot for future projects because this is really nice just the ability to quickly engrave onto a specific PCB just what you've got going on that board or um, you know maybe some of the current setting resistors that kind of thing per PCB you can just put it under the printer under the laser sorry and get that onto your board. With those settings it also worked properly on the purple PCB I did try going over some tracers to see if it caused any damage but it didn't seem to cut through the copper or anything like that so I think it's absolutely fine to print over uh, anything that you've got on the PCB, obviously some tracers you might not want to get oxidised and maybe RF tracers you want to be careful of, uh, but it seemed to work on all of the PCBs that I tried it on. So I think this is a really nice result. I also tried it on those wood samples that came with the printer. And as you can see, absolutely no problem here printing onto some wood as well. The only artefact that I saw is, as you can see at the top here, these top bits of the letters are a little bit darker compared to everything below here and I think I know why it's doing it I'm not sure if there's a way to get around it. So if we take a look in the software it's printing line by line and then once it gets above the A and the Y here the scanning is a much shorter distance so below here it's doing like the full length of everything on the uh, piece of wood and then it's only scanning a shorter distance from the P to the W. And what it would appear is happening is the wood doesn't cool down quite as much and that caused a little bit more burning on the wood in this stage. It doesn't cool down so this bit ended up uh, being a little bit darker just because uh, the wood hadn't cooled down by the time that the laser came back to scan across it again. So one thing that would be nice which I haven't found any kind of setting for is to just cause it to scan at a fixed width because ideally uh, on something like this where I don't want different shades we actually just want everything to be the same and the best way to do this would be just to fix the scanning across this whole width here so that it's the same all the way along and then we get exactly the same result uh, even in these sections here where it's scanning a lot quicker than this area at the bottom here. And a quick look inside the power supply that came with this unit and everything looks kind of okay. It's obviously built down to a price. We've got unbranded capacitors uh, but I think this was the 24 volt version. Uh, the capacitors on the output are 35 volt rated so I think there's just an issue with the label. But yeah this is definitely built down to a cost although they have still got the filter components on here. Surprisingly the bridge rectifier is not tied to this heat sink here. We have got our isolation gap through the PCB. I think the only thing that I'd potentially complain about is that on this side here we've got this heat sink which is uh, reference to mains and it does extend past the isolation barrier. They've got around it by putting some Kapton tape here but if this was to get dropped conceivably we could get very close to this resistor lead here so that's probably the only complaint really about this power supply other than it just being generally quite cheap possibly not going to last as long as a quality brand uh, it's only really these heat sinks uh, that are the problem. We can't really tell whether the, const uh, the construction of the transformer is any good. Uh, we could hypot test it but that doesn't tell you how they've actually wound it and whether it's going to be prone to failure in other ways. Uh, but generally speaking I think it's probably going to be fine. I just prefer to use my own um, power supplies uh, with these types of products anyway. So that's a look at this Congro laser engraver. In the end we got some really nice results but it did take me quite a long time to get there. Uh, quite a few settings to play through but it seems to print best line by line with the gantry moving quite slowly this way and then we don't see any of the effects of these belts. With some line drawings and that kind of thing it, it does follow quite nicely but for rapid movement in this direction here uh, this gantry is just too heavy for these two belts and I think that's my main complaint about this machine. The motors themselves and everything are quite quiet so I think the driver is fairly decent that they're using for these. Uh, the only other thing really I'd say is it is quite big. For my purposes it could be quite a lot smaller um, but as it stands it's quite a big uh, frame and consequently you need somewhere that you can store it uh, that's quite large. But I'll leave a link in the description uh, to this item should you wish to take a look at it. Uh, don't forget to visit our sponsor for this video PCB Way. If you've got any thoughts or comments about this or if you've had any experiences with how to use that light burn software to get better results then do let me know in the comments section down below. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters and until next time thanks for watching.